Welcome. This week we're going to go over lessons 121 through 124. So last week we dabbled in multiplication. This week we're going to do one little lesson on division and then get into some fractions. But before we get started, let's go see what materials will be needed for this week. You're going to need the calculator, their worksheets, the abacus, a dry erase board, the fraction chart. This is new. I'll talk more about it when we get to it in the lesson. The balance, the math card games book, and the fraction card deck. That is new also. Lesson 121, more calculator activities. They get to do some fun activities with their calculator today. One of them is counting by fives. It tells you in the lesson book. I'm going to show you anyway. This is something we've gotten a couple calls on. <laughs> All right. So we do five plus plus twice. Then you do equal. Look, five, 10, 15, 20, 25. Then it says, tell them to start at 400. You don't do anything. You don't need to clear anything. You just put in 400. And it starts 405, 410, 415. Then in the lesson, it says, ask the child to clear the calculator, start at 1000. Not sure why they have that in there. Don't clear the calculator. Just put in 1000. All right, 5, 10, 1010, 1015, 1020. If you clear it, and you put in 1,000, it doesn't do anything. You have to go back and do 5 plus plus equals. All right. Then you go in and put in 1,000 and hit the equal and keep going. The thing is, you don't need to clear it. If you clear it, you have to put 5 plus plus and then the equals again. You just need to go with, to whichever number you want to start with, and then it will continue counting by five. Then without changing anything, look at this. We press in three equals. Look at that. Eight, because five plus three is eight. Well, what about seven equals? Seven plus five is 12. Isn't that cool? I think your kids are going to really enjoy this, and don't be surprised if they want to show it off to their friends, to their siblings, to their dad, grandparents, sky's the limit, right? You'll do the same for counting by twos and they're gonna learn how to do multiplication on the calculator. And then you'll end this lesson with what they call calculator puzzles. So they'll press a number into the calculator and then you ask them to change it to a different number and they need to figure out what they need to add or maybe subtract. Lesson 122, Introducing Division. Yeah, one little lesson on division, but they know enough. If you're coming over from level A, they tackled division in there, one little lesson. We're doing it again in B. It's a little bit more advanced than it was in A, but it's not what they're going to get when they get to level D, all right? But we're just letting them see you can do some of this. It's kind of exciting. We're going to use the abacus again to walk through division. I'm going to use the example that's in the lesson book. There, let's see, Jacob has 12 flowers he wants to plant. So I enter 12 into the abacus. He wants to plant four in a row. So how many rows can he plant? We want to make sure there's we keep it at four. So it's the take and give. Now remember, I'm only using this one hand. I can't do it both at the same time. You want your child to do this at the same time. So when they're taking, they're giving at the same time. All right, so I have four on this row. Now your child may need to do it by one at a time. Or maybe by twos. Or maybe they can see they could do a whole group of four. Let them move the beads how they understand it. And then if you want, you could always come back a second time 
and walk them through if you feel like they did it a real tedious way the first time. Then they get to do some dividing on the math balance. I am not going to pull out the math balance to show you. I think I can explain it pretty easily and you could see it on the picture. So let's say they have 12 divided by 4. They're going to put 12 on one side of the abacus. So they'll put it on the 10 peg and the 2 peg. Then on the other side, they're going to put weights on the 4 until they get it to balance. And they will see that. 12 divided by 4 is 3 because it took 3 pegs. Then you'll end with your child using the calculator to figure out how to divide. Don't tell them. They've learned enough. They know what the sign is for division. Let them figure it out on their own. Lesson 123, beginning fractions. We're going to use a new manipulative. It is the fraction chart. Those of you who've used Right Start in upper levels, or maybe you're coming from A, you're familiar with this. For those of you that are new, you'll see that you have two pieces. You have this piece that's solid, all right? It's all one piece. Then you have another piece where you pop the pieces out. So here the piece is already popped out. You just snap them. They come apart. You don't need to pop them out yourself. This is something that you'll have your child do in the lesson. And I like that Right Start also includes this bag so you can keep your pieces in. And they all fit pretty nice. I've had this for a long time. I've taken this through two kids starting when they were seven and nine. They are now 21 and 23. So these do last for a while. And they're a nice plastic, like it's flexible, but you have to be really intentional to bend it. And I know you may have some children that are like that. So, you know, lay your ground rules on how they are to handle this material. But if it's handled well, and pieces are put away when they're done using it, these can last for quite a while. When we talk on the second page, it says naming the fractions, we call these unit fractions. A unit fraction is just a fraction that starts with a one in the numerator. We do call this fourth, but side note, in British speaking countries, they call it a quarter. And so you might want to interchange it and I think Right Start interchanges it in there, calling it a quarter or calling it a fourth. It's really interesting how people don't realize it's the same thing. And think about it, how many quarters are in a dollar? Four. How many quarters are in a football game? Four. We use that term, but we don't always understand what it means. So a quarter is the same as a fourth. This lesson ends with two games. They're both found in the math card game book. In the fraction section, it's game two, F2, and game F21. So game F2 is fraction memory, and it tells you which cards to get out. So the cards look like this. They're orange, and then on the other side, your numbers, your fractions are orange. There's also some percentages that come with this deck of cards. So you want to get those percentages out of there. We're not doing that right now. Now the game will tell you which cards to get. You'll also be using the fraction pieces. This is a really neat game because what they're going to do is you're going to lay these cards out face down. You're going to take the same correlating fraction pieces, you're going to lay them out where you can't see the numbers. You can only see the back. So it's all the same. You don't know the number. You don't know the fraction. And then they're going to flip over an, a card. Say they flip over one fifth. Then they have to look at the fractions that are laying out to see if they know which one is the one fifth. This is a great game because it really helps them to understand in these unit fractions the sizes. If I hold these up and I tell you one is an eighth and one is a fifth, can you tell just by looking? You should, right? We know that an eighth is smaller than a fifth. 
And if not, if you are someone who might have struggled with fractions, because a lot of people have, I don't think they were taught as well as they could have been taught. You have this that you can use when your kids are playing. And you can see there's one fifth, there's one eighth. It's one thing I love about this linear model that Right Start uses. I find it's a lot easier to be able to see the correlation between the fractions. I could see a lot easier of how many fourths equal a half, how many six equal a third, how many six equal a half. So the linear fraction chart really is one of the best ways of teaching our children fractions. And then the game F2.1 is unit fraction war. And again, you're going to use unit fractions, which means they're all going to start with a one in the numerator. Basically, you're going to use all of these specific cards that are in the game book. You're going to shuffle them together. You're going to deal them out among whoever's playing. And then you flip over the card and whoever has the bigger fraction, they get the cards. Now, let them use this fraction chart because they're still really new at doing fractions. They can look at this to decide who has a bigger one if they don't know just by looking at the numbers on the cards. Last lesson for this week, lesson 124, unit fractions. I don't feel there's a lot I need to say about this lesson other than look in the objectives. Number two, they're going to understand fractions as division. So we introduced them a little bit to division a few lessons ago. Well, now they're going to work and understand that fr a fraction is a division. That line between the one and a five means one is divided by five. How many times can five go into one? It could go in five times. So that's why there's five of these one fifths that equal one. When you're done with the lesson, you should tell them. There are a lot of adults that don't always know how many unit fractions make up a whole. Dr. Cotter would go and ask adults, how many eighths does it take to make a whole? And she said she was really surprised that a lot of them did not know. And I think that's sad <laughs> because if you don't understand that, that's like the basics of fractions. Wow. Anyway, so your children will be learning that. And again, they'll get more in level C and then they get more into level D. But E and F is where we're going to really hit and spend time on understanding fractions. On the second page, look at the activity, the whole fraction chart, and go down to number one. You're going to ask questions. The first one is, where are the thirds? I'm not sure. Like if I'm looking at it, I'm not going to say, oh, the third row. I'd probably point. Your child might say the third row. I would reword this and say, what row are the thirds in? But it's up to you. You can ask it straight the way Right Start writes it, or you can adapt it if you need to. You know your children. I've ended this week. I hope you guys enjoy working with the division and into the fraction charts. We do have two more lessons next week on fractions. Then we get into some symmetry. And then we start our reviews and assessments. You guys, we are so close to being done. Keep persevering. We are almost there. Join me next week as we go over lessons 125 through 128. Until then.